I would like to acknowledge my collaborators, um, uh, including uh, PhD student Xiaofan Zhang, Hong Ming Lu, uh, postdoc researcher uh, Dr. Kai Li Hao, and many others. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> it's also my great honor to collaborate with uh, Professor Thomas Huang who has made uh, fundamental uh, contributions to computer vision, as we all know. And uh, uh, very sadly, Professor Huang passed away recently, and uh, he will be dearly remembered by many of us. Okay? And uh, this research is mainly sponsored by the C3SR Center. So this is uh, Illinois Center and uh, supported by IBM. It's uh, co-directed by uh, Dr. Jin Jun Xiong from IBM and Professor Wen Mei Hu uh, from UIUC. And uh, the work is also sponsored by Inspired IoT, which is a startup company co-founded by me. Okay, so here is the outline for the talk. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the background and challenges, uh, motivations, uh, and the proposed uh, Skynet solution. So uh, Skynet is the name we gave for the deep neural network we developed, right? So uh, this is uh, quite interesting. Um, you know, if uh, you have watched the movie uh, Terminator, uh, you probably uh, were familiar with uh, Skynet, which is a AI defense system, okay? Uh, but um, the reason that we use this uh, name uh, is uh, from a different angle. So we joined a competition, right? So this is a data automation conference uh, uh, system design competition. And what they do is uh, they use um, uh, drones, you know, the drones are flying. So I'm going to show some uh, uh, videos and, uh, later on. And then um, we, uh, the, the competition is to develop deep neural network and then map them into embedded uh, uh, hardware, such as embedded GPU and embedded FPGA to do object detection. And then of course, uh, it has to be low power, it has to be uh, lightweight, and it can also, it also need to go very fast, right? So that's why we thought, okay, we need to develop such a lightweight deep neural, neural network that can fly. And then uh, Skynet is a perfect name. And uh, let's see, the drones use Skynet and then indeed the Skynet is flying, you know, uh, physically. And then we are going to do some demonstration on uh, object detection and uh, uh, the tracking tasks. And uh, it happened that uh, Skynet won the double uh, championship uh, in, the, in the international design competition. And we also offer faster, better results than other trackers. And then uh, I will conclude the, the talk and share some uh, you know, uh, summarized um, uh, remarks. Okay. So uh, I think we are all familiar uh, about the cloud solutions for AI deployments for various type of applications, right? And many cloud providers uh, are doing very well, uh, including IBM, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft, Google, etc. And then, of course, here the main uh, requirements include high throughput performance, and also you need to offer short tail latency, which means uh, uh, you need to provide uh, some kind of a predictable performance, right? It cannot be like, okay, when, I do, uh, when, I'm, when I'm doing uh, this um, uh, voice activated assistant, sometimes I get the answer right away and uh, some other time I get the answer in several seconds, then that's uh, not very good, right? So, um, but the technology is becoming mature to meet uh, these kind of requirements. So if that's the case, uh, why do we still need edge solutions, uh, right? So uh, we probably all heard about edge computing, embedded AI. So, so you know, if uh, cloud computing is becoming so pop popular, why do we still need to deal with edge solutions? And so mainly um, the following reasons uh, are, are driving this, uh, right? The first of all is the communication. 
right? So uh, not um, everywhere, anytime the, the internet is available to us, right? So that can be a concern. Another one is uh, privacy, right? So for certain applications, people just prefer their data to stay locally. They don't want uh, their, their private data to be uploaded uh, somewhere in the cloud, okay? And, uh, you know, we, we heard some very kind of, um, how to say, uh, terrible stories uh, about the people hacking into the cloud and, uh, you know, release the, the private info and stuff like that. And then the third one is a latency requirement, right? So if it's autonomous driving, then I need to make the decision in milliseconds. Uh, then you cannot afford to upload the uh, video or whatever to the cloud, do the inference there, then come back, right? So if that's the case, um, you know, we have to deal with edge solutions and then edge solutions are facing a lot of challenges. Okay, so I will summarize uh, three major challenges. Uh, so the first one is this huge compute demand, right? So on the left side is the training demand, okay? So you can see this is a log scale, okay? So this is exponential. So on the, um, so on the Y axis, uh, uh, this, there's this interesting unit, it's called a beta flop per second days. So this is like, okay, uh, let's say you have a huge computer that can carry out petaflop computation per second and how many days does it require to train the model, okay? And then uh, the X axis is uh, just the timeline, right? So then we uh, probably all are familiar with this uh, alpha go zero, alpha zero, you know, who, who are beating the world champion in the gate uh, in the goal game, et cetera, okay? And then, you know, just uh, that, that uh, took place a couple of years ago, and then compared to the computation demand in 2012, what is the gap? You know, uh, the gap is 300,000 X, okay? So th this is a huge amount of computation demand, right? The training demand it's also huge right and uh, you can see that uh, um, oh sorry uh, it shows that my internet is unstable so so uh, I, you know uh, I'm staying home and uh, uh, due to the pandemic concerns and and uh, you know if uh, you uh, you cannot hear me clearly uh, let me know right away and so on the right side, this is um, uh, inferencing, right? So then uh, you can see when we increase the accuracy, right? So on the y-axis, there's a top one accuracy. When we increase the accuracy, the model in general uh, goes bigger, right? So then this uh, uh, circle area uh, represents the total number of parameters in the model, right? And then the x, uh, access also representing the total operations, right? So you can see it's definitely non-trivial and highly demanding. So that's the number one challenge. And then number two is uh, just like a very related, right? So um, there are many parameters and then the computation is high, right? So then the demanding on the memory utilization is also very high. Right, so this, this is also growing and which is a challenge for uh, embedded systems uh, because typically embedded devices do not have much memory, okay? And down here, this is just uh, presenting the same story from a different angle, right? So let's say we have the high definition inputs, right? So uh, these days, uh, um, uh, you know, so we are typically using 1080p right, 1080p, that's considered as a high definition. But then people start to use 4K cameras also, right? So then you can see it's not just the uh, number of parameters, right? So the number of weights embedded in the DNN, also the feature maps are very high, right? So here there's a, an example for VGG16. And then you can see for certain layers, the total number of feature map is very high, you know, so 
there's no way for for a edge device to hold so much feature map on chip. You have you have to send it out uh, to the off chip memory and all that. That in the, slow the whole thing down. Okay. All right. So then, on top of all this, we are uh, facing this real time requirement, right? Because uh, a lot of these uh, edge devices are dealing with video, audio, streaming data, right? And then we need to deliver high throughput, and uh, people know uh, to increase the throughput, uh, you know, sometimes we can use the batch mode, but then because of the real time requirement, we cannot even wait for assemble the frames into a batch, and then we need a millisecond scale response, and et cetera, right? So it's just compound, you know, on top of the previous challenges. But you know, we engineers, uh, we love challenges, right? That's uh, uh, why we need uh, novel solutions to deal with these challenges. Okay, so let's move to the motivation part. Okay, so then uh, we'll uh, talk about uh, uh, the uh, general flow for AI solutions uh, to be mapped to the edge devices. And then the, uh, our argument is the general conventional flow will not work. So that's why we propose, we'll propose a new flow that will be discussed in, in item three, okay? All right, so what is the general kind of top-down DN design and deployment flow, okay? So first of all, uh, we need to deal with um, uh, two types of uh, quality, right? So the first quality coming out of the DNN, deep neural network, which is accuracy, latency, throughput, Okay. And then the second one is uh, energy and the power and the hardware cost for the edge device, right? So, so we have to mingle both requirements and then try to get the uh, uh, results, good results, high quality results through this kind of uh, almost like a co-design design space, right? So because we need to design the deep neural network, we need to map the deep neural network to the hardware the hardware needs uh, development as well, okay? So it's not so straightforward, okay? So uh, let's look at the conventional flow, right? So people typically will use a deep neural network designed by data scientists, okay? So the data scientists mainly focus on the uh, neural network itself, and they may not be aware of how this deep neural network need to be used, okay? And then in order to feed the DNN to the edge device, then people invented the various type of techniques such as quantization. So we don't need 32 bit, uh, you know, if we can quantize it to four bits, eight bits, it can help us, right, for the hardware. And the pruning and the layer fusion and the uh, 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 various type of uh, convolutional computations. And then on top of the hardware, then, you know, how do we really improve the parallel factor, resource allocation, et cetera. And then sometimes uh, uh, we need multiple iterations between software and hardware until it converge. Okay. So what's wrong with this? Uh, before we talk about its uh, potential issues, uh, let's uh, take a look of uh, a typical embedded systems. Right, so these are popular embedded systems, and they are also used in this international uh, system level competition. Right, so the first one is NVIDIA TX2 GPU. Right, so it uh, offers uh, 665 GFLOPs. Right, the clock speed is uh, uh, 1.3 gigahertz, um, and uh, so uh, the competition has been going on for several years. And so this is a DAC SDC, uh, Design Automation Conference uh, System Design uh, co uh, Contest, right? So we listed uh, some uh, winning designs, uh, top three uh, um, winning designs. And um, uh, from uh, 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 the past two years, and then uh, they typically use a reference deep neural network, and typically they are uh, lightweight. So shuffle net, uh, retina net, uh, tiny YOLO, et cetera. And then they do some software optimization, some hardware optimization, okay? 
And similarly, if you look at um, designs targeting IPGA, right? So here, IPGA's resource uh, is uh, even more scarce. And uh, uh, so here, it can offer 100, about 144 uh, flops at 200 microns. Okay. So here, uh, there are uh, a little bit more techniques uh, that can be deployed. Right, so people still use like a, a starch with a, a lightweight reference model and then go through some software optimization, hardware optimization, go through the iterations until hopefully, right, the, the, the solutions can, can converge. Okay, so what are the drawbacks of uh, this uh, conventional top-down DN design uh, uh, given methodology, okay? The first one is it's really hard to balance the sensitivities of DNN designs on software and hardware metrics, right? So sometimes uh, the software metrics and the hardware metrics are fighting with each other, okay? So, you know, if uh, I need a higher accuracy, then typically I need more layers and, right, uh, more channels and, but then that will increase energy or power. It will increase latency. Right, so it's uh, like a tug war, okay? So then if uh, these uh, two metrics are not designed simultaneously, then it's very hard to converge, okay? And then uh, it's very difficult to select appropriate reference DNNs at the beginning as well, okay? So typically these are chosen by experience, right? And uh, there are some uh, reported performance from published data sheets. Uh, data sets and uh, then just try. It's a, like a try and error approach. Okay, so then if we take a look of this uh, overall design strategy, what happened is, okay, we have a application and we have this uh, target uh, quality of service or quality of result, okay? And, and then uh, we need to go through this uh, software DN model design, which is already very complicated. Then you go to the hardware, go through the hardware implementation, and if the hardware implementation cannot really meet the uh, requirement, then you have to go back, right? So then it's very tedious and uh, suboptimal, okay? So what is the proposed solution? And uh, our proposed solution is DNA model and accelerator co-design, okay? So this has to be co-designed and um, so then both uh, type of dimensions can be considered uh, coherently in order to deliver better results. Okay, so then now let's talk about our proposed uh, Skynet solution. So we actually propose a bi-directional approach for DNN accelerator code line. Okay, and then what is our key idea? Okay, so before we talk about that, uh, I just um, uh, list some previous works uh, um, that we did. And uh, we actually identified this uh, co-design uh, issue and the opportunity uh, through a, a paper that's published two years ago. And then later on, uh, we start to work on this because we realized this is very important. And then we explore the IPGDN co-design. And then we also talk about this uh, NICE, uh, N-A-I-S, right? NICE um, uh, design methodology, which is a neural architecture implementation search. So th they are searched together. And then based on this design methodology, we developed Skynet, which is also published, okay? And then the most recent work uh, will appear at the uh, DAC this year. It's called uh, EDD. All right, so what is uh, this uh, coding methodology, right? So in a nutshell, we are not uh, just relying on the top down. We still have the top down, but we also have bottom up and you become bi-directional, okay? So let's say the bottom up direction is uh, basically doing uh, architecture template guided DNN model search. Okay, so we can search our DNN models, right? So let's say for the uh, competition, we need to search for a high, uh, highly accurate uh, and lightweight DNN model, 
So uh, when we are doing that search, we need, need to consider the target architecture, right? So then it become a, a architecture aware DNN search, right? Which is the bottom, uh, bottom up, okay? And then we still have this top down. So when we are searching the DNN, we need to quickly evaluate whether these DNNs are hardware friendly, right? So then this uh, bottom up and top down are explored simultaneously. Okay? So then this curve shows that uh, it, it's still iterative search. However, it's searching this uh, combined design space simultaneously and effectively. Okay, so then eventually when we converge, we converge into a co-designed solution that offers both the hardware implementation and the DNN model itself. Okay, so then what are the opportunities and the challenges? Opportunities include shorten, uh, shortened DNN cycle, right? So, and we have a better chance to meet the resource and performance constraints. And then as a result, uh, the DN models are hardware friendly, just intrinsically because of the coming out of this co-design methodology. And uh, we are also facing challenges, right? So, and, uh, uh, so first of all, high quality DN and uh, high quality accelerator designs are both challenging by themselves. And then now we are combining the design space together and then the design space can be quite large, right? So, if we do not explore this design space well, then it can be uh, become difficult to converge, right? So then it really requires uh, some novel search methodology. Okay, so here is uh, the overview of our proposed flow, okay? And uh, so the basic idea is to come up with so-called basic building blocks, okay? And uh, so if uh, we look at the picture on the left, the stage one, uh, we adopt a, like a software uh, IP uh, based solution, right? So typically when people are talking about IP cores, right, intellectual property cores, typically we are talking about hardware cores, like uh, ARM core, right? So these are IP cores. Uh, however, the similar idea can actually be extended to the software side. So for this particular case, we have the deep neural uh, network building components and each of them is uh, it's reusable. So these are the building blocks. Okay? And then we come up with an idea called a bundle. So this bundle is um, a, um, like a, you can treat it as a, um, uh, like a, core screen building block for the deep neural network, okay? And then the bundle itself is hardware friendly, okay? So then uh, what we do is once we have these building blocks, then we can explore uh, DNN and accelerator architectures based on templates, okay? So first of all, we build these bundles, okay? So let's say uh, there's one bundle that, that use uh, convolutional three by three, convolutional five by five, et cetera. There are many different other bundles that we can explore. And then we can evaluate these bundles, okay? So then we are familiar with a Preto curve study, right? So then for, for this curve, what we do is we come up with different bundles, right? The bundles uh, basically use a different combinations of the building blocks, and then we evaluate their latency on the IPGA and their accuracy, okay? And then we uh, come up with the Preto curve. So that means that there are good trade-offs among these bundles. And then we use this bundle to build the final deep neural network. So how do we do it? So uh, we basically stack these bundles one on top of another, right? So this is a similar like a uh, uh, ResNet type of deep neural network uh, or uh, VGG16, VGG19, right? So the, the each bundle is similar to another bundle and they only differ by number of channels and et cetera, right? So then here, what we do is uh, you can see we can build this deep neural network and the bundle can be something like this, okay? 
And then we can also decide whether between the bundles, we will insert uh, um, you know, pooling uh, layers or not. And then so this is automated, this process is automated. So then we can search different bundles, uh, so good bundles, right? And then we can also evaluate the deep neural networks coming out of the bundles when they are composed together. And then we use a search algorithm, it's called a particle swarm optimization. So I'm, I'm going to discuss more details later. So then after we uh, come up with very good bundle designs, okay? So then we can do some additional uh, features uh, such as a feature map bypass, and et cetera. So I'm going to talk about the details pretty soon. Okay. So let's take a look how we can build these bundles. What the, the, uh, what, uh, the, the main features are for these bundles that can enable a very effective co-design, okay? So as I mentioned, the bundle is a set of a sequential DNA layers as a basic DNA building block, okay? And then the interesting thing is uh, it also represents a combination of IP instances. So these are the hard, hardware IP instances for the DNA computation. So we have this bundle. The bundle will be used to build the DNA. And then for each bundle, because when, when we build them, uh, they are hardware friendly. And so the bundle can be naturally um, implemented on top of the hardware, right? So this bundle becomes a bridge between the hardware and the software, okay? So then as long as we can define, we can search for the bundle well, then we know the final DNA and the final implementation will be good. So this is a key feature that we use to reduce the search space and then you know, naturally it can uh, derive uh, better results, okay? So, right, so this uh, is uh, just showing more details, uh, right? So for this bundle, right? So I already covered it, right? So we can use the bundle to build the deep neural networks and then the bundle has its uh, hardware friendly implementations, right? So then these are the uh, so we have the bundle structure, right, from the deep neural network point of view, and we have the implementation of the bundle structure on top of the accelerator accordingly. Okay, so uh, we actually target both uh, GPU and the IPGA. Uh, however, for this talk, I will mainly focus on the IPGA because uh, the GPU implementation can be treated almost like a subset of the IPGA uh, implementation because for IPGAs, we can do a lot of customized uh, solutions. For GPU, although we can do some, uh, some optimization, but uh, they are relatively limited because the GPU already designed for us, right? Okay, so uh, let's take a look of the IPGA architecture uh, that are going to implement the, the bundles, right? So we actually uh, de uh, delivered a uh, efficient hardware implementation solution, okay? So this is a fine-grained tile-based architecture, okay? So uh, if uh, we take a look at this picture, right? So these uh, are the input feature maps, and then we actually partition them, right? So because the feature maps can be, can be quite large, we partition them into eight by eight tiles, okay? And then uh, when we implement the hardware, we actually implement a five-stage pipeline, right? So this is uh, almost like a customized CPU, okay? So then you can see we have the tiled uh, image and the image can be pushed into the tiles, right? Can be pushed into the pipeline, right? So the first pi pi pipeline stage is uh, load data and then the second pipeline stage is a convolution three by three, then convolution one by one, pooling, and then write back, right? Write back is basically writing the output, right? So the convolutional output, right? To, to another buffer, okay? So then you can see because of this, we can do inter 
and the intralayer IP reuse, right? So let's say we have a single convolutional three by three hardware IP, and then this thing can be reused by different uh, uh, tiles, right? Because they are done in a pipeline fashion, okay? And then um, they can, the IP can be shared across different layers because uh, when we design the deep neural network, the layers are similar, right? So you can see when we uh, develop this whole thing, we consider both the quality of the DNN and the quality of the hardware implementation. Okay, so then uh, because of this tiling solution, uh, the implementation is more scalable, and then because of the pipelining solution, then it's uh, in, uh, increasing uh, the overall throughput uh, with low latency. All right, so then uh, let's uh, um, take a look of uh, a little bit more details, okay? And uh, so the first one, so I already uh, kind of covered this, right? So what we do is, um, uh, we prepare DNN components and we enumerate the bundles, we evaluate the bundles, right? So this is just kind of like a recap of what I just talked about. And then we select those in the uh, Preto curve. Right? So this is a, uh, uh, like, a, um, like a high level summary, what's going on. So for the first stage, after the first stage, we will have a bunch of bundles coming out of the Preto curve. And then we move to the second stage, okay? So the second stage uh, will explore the DNN architecture to meet hardware software metrics, okay? And so what do we do? So we need to solve this multi-objective optimization problem, right? So this is the automated. So it's actually a search algorithm that we need to develop, okay? So uh, we stack the selected bundle, and then how do we evaluate the bundle? We actually, uh, use um, uh, so-called uh, PSO, right? So the particle swarm uh, optimization search algorithm, okay? So it's um, in one type of evolutional, uh, evolutionary uh, search algorithm, okay? We use uh, two hyperparameters, uh, which are the channel expansion factor and pooling spot, right? Because this will just define the uh, unique bundles, okay? And then we evaluate the DNN candidate through this PSO search algorithm. And then this is more fine grained and then try to come up with the best DNN. Okay. So then uh, let's see how this is done, how this um, uh, particle swarm optimization algorithm is done. Okay. So uh, first of all, we need to consider both the latency and the accuracy, right? Latency comes out of the hardware implementation accuracy comes out of the DNN development, okay? And then uh, we uh, adopt this uh, group-based um, uh, evolution, right? So candidates with the same bundle are in the same group, right? Because <clears throat> uh, the, uh, they are kind of similar, right? So uh, for the same bundle, we are searching the solutions uh, for the detailed parameters of the bundle Okay. And then because they are sharing similar operations, right? So it makes sense to group them together. Okay. So then we come up with a fitness score, right? So fitness here. So let's see, we have uh, the ice group and then J is uh, just a uh, uh, one bundle within that group. Okay. So then how do you evaluate uh, uh, its uh, fitness? Okay, so the fitness is a combination of accuracy okay, and the um, uh, latency. Okay, so here this term is the um, uh, candidate latency, right? So we are searching the DNN and then we can quickly evaluate its hardware latency, right? Because we have the IPs and the IP, we already characterized the hardware IP, so we can build the models, right? So these are analytical models that can provide the estimated latency very quickly, okay? And then this tar is the targeted latency, right? 
And then alpha is a factor to balance the accuracy and the latency. So this alpha is actually an active value. Okay. So this means uh, if uh, my targeted latency is, uh, if, if my estimated latency, which comes out of the DNN design, is uh, smaller than the target latency, then I have a higher fitness function, right? So, uh, so this uh, fitness function is guiding the overall search. All right. So then uh, for the PSO to work well, we actually need to uh, consider two type of um, uh, uh, parameters. Uh, one is a uh, local best, another one is a group best, right? So lo local best is like a local search, right? It's relatively greedy, okay? So it's uh, also, it's basically searching for this targeted uh, goal, okay? However, we have to follow, we al also need to consider the group best, best because the group best offer a global optimal solution. So then during the search, we have to combine both local best and, gr uh, and the group best. And uh, eventually the goal is to reach group best right, for different candidates. Okay, so all the details are in the, uh, in the paper. So then after we are done with the candidate search, then we come up with um, uh, uh, top candidates, right, that offers a good accuracy and good hardware implementation. And then on top of that, we can add some additional advanced uh, DN features, right? So those DN features can be customized towards uh, certain use cases. All right, so then for stage three, for this particular competition, right, because uh, we adopt this DLM methodology and then eventual goal is to uh, win the competition, right? So for this particular competition, uh, it has a very small object, right? So then because of that, we add feature map bypass and then we add feature map reordering and then for better hardware efficiency, we use a uh, RADU6. RADU6 means um, uh, any value that's greater than six uh, is just, uh, you know, uh, just cut. And um, uh, so any value greater than six becomes six, okay? So then uh, this can lead to smaller bit rates. All right, so then what's the overall implementation, right? So this is stage three, right, hardware deployment. And then for this uh, IPGA implementation, we actually have the system level implementation, right? Input the images coming in, go through pre-processing, uh, Etc. And then we have uh, on chip um, weight buffer, on chip data buffer, and then we have all these IP cores to support um, uh, computation. And then we have this pipeline uh, solution, as I mentioned, and everything's carried out uh, smoothly. Okay. So then uh, let's spend about five minutes. Uh, so I think I probably have five minutes, five to 10 minutes to talk about the results. Okay. So let's introduce uh, this uh, object detection task uh, coming from the drones, right? And then uh, it started uh, a couple of years ago, right? So actually quite uh, challenging because, um, uh, be because uh, the objects to be detected are quite small, okay? So then uh, this is the uh, metric to evaluate the final quality. And then this uh, RIOU is, um, uh, so this is uh, for the overlap between the ground truth and uh, your detected bounding box, right? So the higher, the better, but you also need to uh, consider the energy efficiency, right? <clears throat> so to really win the competition, we have to have high accuracy, but in the same time, uh, very high energy efficiency. So both algorithm and hardware are considered. So we analyzed uh, this um, uh, data set, right? So we find some interesting uh, kind of um, uh, phenomenon, okay? So uh, this is uh, the, on the X axis is the area of output box, right? So this are the detection box divided by area of input image, okay? 
So then for all the images, for all the objects, that is um, about 1% and less, right, compared to the overall image, there are 31% of uh, such bounding boxes. Okay. So then if we increase uh, the area to 9%, and then you reach 91%. So then here it shows many objects are very small. So here I'm showing uh, some demo, right? So then you can see uh, this, uh, this object in the middle is actually a person riding on a horse, right? So if you do not look at it carefully, we cannot even know, right? So you can see it's a, you know, it's um, uh, moving fast, so there's a speed uh, requirement, and in the same time, we have to have high accuracy. Okay, so then uh, how did we add some of the uh, advanced features uh, on top of the DNN solution uh, coming out of the code search, right? So here I introduced some uh, details. First of all, this is the basic Skynet structure, right? So then you can see, indeed, uh, we come up with a, a bundle design, right? So this combination is a bundle design, okay? And then uh, uh, because when we are searching, we can search the channel parameters, right? So then all these parameters are searched, right? And then when we are searching, we, all, we can also insert uh, max pooling, et cetera, and these are also determined, okay? So on top of this uh, uh, DNN solution, right? Uh, how do we further improve? So uh, because we realize a lot of objects are very tiny, so then we introduce this bypass um, uh, feature, okay? So uh, the objects can still, the features can still go through the original pipeline. However, we add a bypass, so some small objects can directly uh, be fed into the, this uh, final block, right? So then we do not have further information loss, right? Because if you go through another pooling, they become so tiny that we cannot have a very high detection rate, right? So then at the end, we also have multiple uh, uh, like a feature maps uh, that can help the final uh, detection solution, okay? So then overall, uh, we only have 0 0.4 million parameters, right? So this is a very uh, uh, lightweight. And then we use the quantization, uh, batch mode, tidying, et cetera. And then, uh, you know, so this is the overall pipeline and we apply Skynet to both GPU and IPDA. Okay. So then uh, in terms of the computation for DAC SDC, so uh, let's look at uh, both results for GPU and IPDA. So first of all, let's look at the GPU results. Okay, so GPU results for uh, uh, the year 2019 and the, the year 2018. So then you can see uh, uh, 2019 did offer better solutions compared to 2018, right? So the whole community is really improving. Right, so the quality of the design is in, uh, improving as well. And uh, uh, however, our Skynet GPU design uh, is um, much better than the third, uh, than the second and the third team, right? We are 2.3x faster, okay? So if you look at IPGA solutions, right? So again, uh, the IPGA 19, the results are better than IPGA 18. Uh, however, our IPGA solution has a much better accuracy compared to other solutions. Okay, so then we um, uh, later on extended our Skynet solution to real-time tracking problems. Right? So we use a large-scale high-diversity uh, benchmark called uh, GOT 10K. Okay? So it has 10K video segments uh, with 1.5 million labeled bounding boxes and a very generic, right? So 560 classes, 80 uh, motion patterns, et cetera, right? So here is an example, right? So you can see this uh, little penguin is going, sometimes uh, it's hidden behind 
And then the dog is running, right? Sometimes small, sometimes big, and speed are changing, angle are changing. So these are actually quite challenge for the tracking task to do. And then what we did is uh, we compare our result uh, with previous result, right? So there are uh, two popular trackers, right? One is called uh, CMRPN++, another is called the CM mask. okay? So both trackers use uh, a DNN to extract features, okay? Because they need to extract the feature and then, then do the prediction for the future frames, okay? So then what we do is uh, we compare SkyNet against ResNet50 okay, as the backbone DNN to extract the features. And then we compare average overlap, right? So this is uh, like uh, the um, IOU, okay? And then this is a success rate based on threshold of the AO, right? So then uh, SR 0 0.5, that means the tracking success rate when the average um, uh, overlap is 0 0.5, okay? So then when we compare both uh, type of trackers, we actually achieve similar or better accuracy and uh, but faster results. Okay, so let's conclude this talk and uh, we presented uh, SkyNet and the uh, hardware efficiency and design methodology, okay? So uh, it add a bottom up design flow on top of the top down, so it become a bi-directional, okay? And then we presented the effective way to capture realistic hardware constraints and solution to uh, satisfy the demanding hardware software metric, okay? So it has been demonstrated by object detection and tracking tasks, and this is open source, okay? And uh, because when we join the competition, one requirement is uh, the final design need to be open sourced. Okay, so, so you know, everyone is, um, uh, can, is welcome to download and play with it. So by the way, there's another competition this year for DAC, right? It's the same competition and uh, um, I cannot say too much, but uh, we improved over the previous uh, year's uh, uh, result. The deadline is next Wednesday and uh, we, uh, we will submit our result again. So stay tuned. All right, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Chen.